the iPad Pro. This is the topic of today's video. Yes, this intro is kind of weird, it's not my usual excited intro, but today's video is really, really serious. This is my 2018 iPad Pro. And today's video is not a review, it's not a questions video, it's not like my long-term review experience, it isn't. Today's video, it's all about the state of the iPad Pro and what's happened to this beautiful product that has fallen into disgrace over at Apple. So, I don't know what happened, but in the last three years, Apple completely forgot how to make iPads, how to make them great and how to sell them. So, in today's video, I will try to explain you, the viewer, and of course everyone else, why I think the iPad Pro is what it is and why it's failing. So, no further ado, don't forget to drop a down below, subscribe to my channel. Today's video is the state of the iPad slash iPad Pro. So, if you're excited, roll the intro. But before we do that, we need to first hear about our sponsor, WeLock. WeLock is a brand that sells locks, just like the name says. They are today's sponsor and just like I told you, they sell locks. But these locks are special because they don't have a key. They just use your fingerprints and they also have other options with codes. But today's video, I will talk about the fingerprint lock. This is really, really useful if you want to put it on your gamer's room for you to lock it just for yourself, not needing a key, just a fingerprint, or for your house, room, I don't know. You just replace your current lock on your door for this current lock. You just use your fingerprint, this turns, and on the other side, you also have a knob that you can turn from inside. So it's a pretty cool technology, really simple, and I will leave this link for this product on the comments down below. So go check it out. If you want to know more about this product and how to set it up, just open this very useful manual that they give you. They give you it in several languages, Germany, Portuguese. They, they send me a Portuguese manual, an English one, a Chinese one. So you have tons of options. Go check it out. Thanks, WeLock, for sponsoring today's video. And of course, I will leave all their links on the description down below. So, the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro, it's in a weird spot. I know, the iPad Pro was launched in 2018, and this is a 2018 model, not the exclusive iPad Pro lineup that was launched in 2015, but I think the most recent and modern iPad Pros that we got now were introduced and firstly launched in 2018. And here, here lies the first problem. The iPad Pro, when it was launched in 2018, was too good. So Apple released everything at once and made the iPad Pro 2018 version the perfect iPad. Since then, I don't have any reason to upgrade for my 2018 version. This iPad Pro is the best iPad Pro ever released and now, in 2023, I don't have any desire to upgrade it because this iPad Pro is just still perfect. Mini LED, M2 chip, better cameras, nothing has convinced me to upgrade. And here's the first point that I think I need to touch on. The iPad Pro has been getting too much hardware improvements without the software to actually accompany these iPad Pro's improvements. Because I think that the software right now is still not good enough, not even close for this 2018 iPad Pro. I think this chip, the A12X chip, still has ton to give and Apple has been limiting it just because of its age. I don't think this A12X chip has reached its full potential. And so that's the first big point, the software and hardware integration in the iPad Pro lineup. Apple has been giving the iPad Pro too much hardware improvements and not software improvements. Like we have been getting Stage Manager, some other things, but those are minimal when compared to this iPad's improvement. The M1 chip, the M2 chip, Mini LED, the double camera system, ultra wide cameras, LiDAR, so many things that the iPad Pro got in the last four years or five years since the 2018 was launched. But if you think about the software skills that we got on this iPad Pro, you can count them by the fingers. Stage Manager, uh, Writing Recognition, iOS features, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. I don't remember the fifth. So that's a big issue. Since then we got the Magic Keyboard, since then we got so many things, iPad OS, and still nothing. Nothing has came and said, finally, the iPad is a viable computer replacement. No, nothing. And even so, nothing has came and said, this is evolutionary, this is completely obligatory for you to upgrade so you can get this feature. No, Apple hasn't done that. There's no hardware slash software feature paired to that that Apple has launched since 2018 that makes us, us consumers, upgrade. There's none. And that's a problem. In five years, Apple hasn't innovated enough on the iPad Pro. 
the M2 chip, mini LED, those are incredible, incredible technologies, but they are not enough to make someone upgrade because yeah, this is still a ProMotion 120Hz, really good LCD screen. This is still really, really powerful. The screen here is the same as the 11 inch from 2022 with the M2 chip. So if that's iPad, that's, that's a good screen. If that's a good screen for to put in an iPad Pro, this is still an amazing screen. Like the mini LED is good, but who will spend like a thousand dollars extra on that? No one. And okay, the price increased onto 12.9 inch. We got the M2 chip. Now we got exclusive Final Cut Pro and other softwares exclusive for the M1 and the M2 versions, but still, no, there's nothing that this iPad Pro 2018 can do that the other ones can. Monitor support, stage manager, yes, those are better on the M2 and the M1 version. What? Why? Why would you use that? That's not good enough. That's not near perfection, just like Apple likes to do. That's just the, I would say, some janky way that Apple found to make people upgrade because they are software locking features from older iPads that it's not necessary. So I'm here to defend the 2018 iPad Pro and tell you this was too perfect for its time. Apple needed to scale down a bit the release. First release the redesign and then the new chip or first release the redesign and then promotion or scatter these things out like a complete redesign with a complete chip build out with the A12X chip and a complete redesign for the Apple Pencil and Face ID, everything at the same time made this iPad Pro too good for its time. This iPad Pro still has the same design, Face ID, still has everything that the older iPad Pros have, but shot off an ultra wide camera and the M generation of chips. That's it. And even so, Apple gave it a bit of stage manager. Not everything, but they gave it a bit. And Still having the best speaker system on a tablet on the market because it's about the same as the M2 version. Having the same incredible 12.9 inch screen with the new Apple Pencil 2, but they came out with 2018 iPad Pro. So no innovation in that area. It's still the newest version, the, the Apple Pencil 2. And not having like better, okay, they have Thunderbolt on USB-C. This one doesn't. Who cares? It's an iPad. The Apple Pencil behaves about the same way that it does on the 2022. M2 iPad Pro. So it just connects onto the side of the iPad, latches there, charges there, and when you want to use it, just pick it up, click on the screen, and you start writing. So there's no difference on the note-taking part, on the most important part for the iPad right now. The thing that is keeping it alive is the Apple Pencil, and I think since 2018 there's no innovation. Yeah, we got the M2 generation with the other thing on the Apple Pencil. Cool. That doesn't make people upgrade. I want more. I want more things on the Apple Pencil. I love taking notes. I use it for university, but the 2018 version is way more than enough. The only thing that I really care about on the iPad Pros for the Apple Pencil is 120 Hertz. That makes or breaks the experience because I've used the iPad Airs with the Apple Pencil second generation, terrible, don't like it. I've used the iPad Mini, terrible, don't like it because of the refresh rate, not because of the processor, the screen, or the iPad itself. It's the 120 Hertz that make a difference. And that's the only thing that actually brought me to the Pro and will keep me on the Pro, is the promotion. So I think that the Apple Pencil is ground that Apple needs to explore more. It's one of the main inputs on the iPad Pro, it needs a change. But currently, I'm very happy with it on my 2018 version. No need for upgrade on that. Really good. Another thing that I wanna see upgraded is these three dots on the back. This is the smart connector. And this connects to the smart folio keyboard, to the magic keyboard, to the peripherals of the iPad Pro. And that's something that the iPad Pro has a really, really good strength, is the accessories that you can attach onto this computer. Yes, this is still a computer for me, but you can attach the magic keyboard and make it a complete Mac replacement on the hardware side. You can get the magic keyboard, which is about the same as on the Mac. You can get the trackpad, the magic trackpad, about the same, just very much smaller, but I think that if Apple explored more on the Magic Keyboard, made it better, solid, more solid, because currently it's a bit flimsy, made the system a little bit more intuitive, more ports on the side instead of only having one USB-C port, then I do believe that this device, this device could replace the Mac, not just on the software side, because there's a lot of work doing there, but if Apple can nail the next Magic Keyboard, they can completely, completely rest assured the doubts about the Magic Keyboard and the iPad Pro's capability of replacing a Mac. Currently, the Magic Keyboard is not up to date or not up to par of the Mac because it has less ports, because it's top side heavy, so this iPad screen is heavier than the keyboard itself, so it tilts to the back and falls, while the Mac, it's 
downside heavy, so the, the lower part of the computer is much, much heavier than the screen, which makes the balance of the weight much, much better and much easier to carry it on your lap. That's why it's called a laptop. But still, if Apple can create more accessories for the iPad Pro, like a kickback stand with the smart connector that actually turns your iPad Pro into a HomePod, that can turn your iPad Pro truly into all-in-one device that can replace your smart home devices and screens, can replace your TV if it wants to, or your computer, can replace your full-on computer. So imagine reaching home, smart connecting your iPad Pro to the wall, and these three connectors on the back connect to your external display and turn on this huge 30-inch display with a mouse and external keyboard, and that's, that's your laptop. Imagine doing that. Imagine all the things that Apple can do, like a Pro Display XGR with smart connector support. Imagine all of that. You can connect it on the back of your Pro Display XGR. Boom, you have a solid computer there. Imagine all of that. All of that with the M3, M4 chip, or even more Pro chips, like the M3 Pro or the M3 Max, I don't know. Make the iPad Pro more versatile, because that's its strength. It's the versatility of the iPad Pro. It's not the power, it's not the ports, it's not the software even, but it should be its versatility. And Apple is not exploring that realm that I think it's very, very, very valuable for the iPad Pro. But of course, currently, those accessories are really expensive and not that great. Let me know in the question below what you think about the Magic Keyboard. I think that the iPad Pro 2018 nails everything that is perfect of an iPad, if you know what I mean. Like, Apple treats the iPad lineup like an iPad right now. And I think that the iPad Air, which is Apple's current consumer device, it's worse than 2018 iPad Pro. And still, it's an iPad. The iPad Pro, the M2 generation, tries to be a computer, but it isn't. While the iPad Pro 2018, it's actually an iPad Pro, but doesn't try to be a computer, just tries to be a perfect tablet. And that's why I think it's still really, really good in 2023. And 2024, and 2025, until Apple releases something exclusive that is really, really powerful for the M2, M3 version of the iPad Pros, I don't think, truly, I don't think they will sell more iPad Pros than I'm saying right now, which is saying much because right now the sales of the iPad Pro are really, really low. So what can Apple do to fix this problem of the iPad Pro? Well, it's tough. They released a really good product here. They need to wait out for the batteries to degrade on this product, so we now need to upgrade. I have to share a secret with you right now. My iPad Pro screen is cracked. I don't know if you can see it on, like, on this camera, but I will show some B-roll. The iPad Pro screen here is cracked. Yeah, it's a cracked screen. And still, it cost me like six, seven hundred dollars to, to actually fix it. I didn't. I just kept using it. I don't care. I will use this iPad Pro until it dies. The quad speaker system here, really, really good. Still up to notch. The display, although it's cracked, incredible for streaming video, playing video games, edit some photos sometimes. I don't need more than that on an iPad. If Apple wants to focus the iPad on being an iPad, then what they need to do is make iPads like this, like the iPad Air with 120 Hertz, so the 2018 iPad Pro, give it a good camera for digitizing documents, that's it. Charge less than $1,000 and you will see you will sell like hotcakes. While if you want to make the iPad Pro a computer, then you need to venture more on the macOS side and less on the iPad S side. I don't want more iOS features. I want more macOS features. And that's something that Apple is really afraid of doing right now because they don't want to cannibalize their Ma Apple Silicon transition on the Mac. And I think they right now, they are leaving the iPad Pro in the back burner for a reason because then it enters the second point, which is my theory. I think that Apple is leaving the iPad Pro in the back burner for a reason. I think they want to finish out and ride this wave of the Apple Silicon transition and sell as much Macs as possible. And then, then they will focus on the iPad and truly make a real computer replacement. I've seen this before. I've seen these titles and these videos and like myself is doing right now, saying the iPad Pro has been abandoned by Apple. Apple doesn't care about the iPad Pro anymore. I've seen that in 2016 when Apple released the 2016 MacBook Pro. I've seen all of those titles, all of those stories, all of those opinions. But what happened then? Apple in 2020 revolutionized the Mac with Apple Silicon. And now it seems like Apple does really care about the Mac and wants to sell you Macs. So right now with the iPad, I think we are seeing the same thing. Apple is giving some hardware changes, giving it some things so it doesn't feel abandoned, but truly, truly is on the back burner. It doesn't matter right now. And I think Apple wants to focus it more when Apple Silicon Transition on the Mac finishes up. So in about one year, I think we'll start seeing the iPad Pros improving. I think the next generation of iPad Pros will be a big change. Apple needs to do something. The last three, four generations were about the same. 
since 2018, then the 2020 version, then the 2021 version, and the 2022 version were like all about the same. If you buy a 2020 version, physically, it's the same as the 2022. The only difference about the 2018 is the cameras. So yeah, Apple needs to change something. Not the Apple Pencil, not USB-C, not the amazing Face ID system. No, they need to change the software. They need to change some of the hardware actual approaches and they need to change the way that the software and the hardware behaves with itself. More like a computer, less like a tablet. I understand why Apple does this, because I think fundamentally Apple wants the app to be a touch first experience. And moving closer to the surface idea, I think it's a mistake. I know it's vain, very dangerous waters to, to move through because these devices are really good what they are, which is a tablet. And if Apple wants to make it more than that, they need to change a lot of things on the iPad Pro, especially on the software side. And they can ruin the experience for the other users that love using the iPad Pro. My father loves the iPad Pro. It's his only computer. And there's a lot of people like him. So I understand Apple is afraid to change something, but make it like a software optional, hidden on the settings app, where you can turn on macOS mode or computer mode. I don't know, make it something different, available only for the iPad Pros, the newest version, make some exclusive feature, I don't care. Just make the Apple Pros better at software, better at files management, better at high-end software support, better at everything. Playing games, play AAA games, I don't know. Make the Apple Pro the end-all, be-all device. Like, I think that the Apple Pro has potential to replace the Mac and my video console, because this is great to play games, to stream videos, to edit videos if I put it on the Magic Keyboard. This is great for everything. This is an all-in-one device. The only threat that I see right, currently for the iPad Pro is the Apple Vision Pro, which is probably going to replace these big portable screens that we have on our hands, but only in a very distant future. So I think the iPad Pro still has like 10 years before those devices get pretty mature to the point that you actually don't need an iPad anymore. But I want Apple to focus on the iPad Pro one last time, not just the iPad Pro, but the other iPads. Currently, it feels like the iPad lineup is abandoned. And I think that the only true iPad right now is the iPad mini because it doesn't want to be more than it is. A simple, big screen. Good for streaming videos, good for some word texting, for some PowerPoint doing, and good for, again, social media, streaming videos, watching movies. And it's just a bigger iPhone screen. While the iPad Pro currently tries to be more than it is, and when that happens, it just gets confusing. But there's a solution and I see Apple in the future fixing it up. I think they are starting doing it on the 2022 iPad Pro. They gave it the new stage manager, which is better than it was before. They gave it the monitor support, which is a first. I think it's a starting point for Apple. And I think they're improving this experience with the iPad Pro. I just want a full-fledged computer here. And I think I have the possibility to get on my 2023, 2024 iPad Pro, a Mac replacement. But let me know in the comments down below what you think about the iPad. Do you think it's abandoned? Do you think Apple has completely forgot about it? Or do you think right around the corner in 2024, will we get a huge change to the iPad lineup that will rock Apple's ecosystem? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the iPad Pro. Currently, I'm still using my 2018 version and I will use it until Apple reveals something worth upgrading for. I'm waiting for the 2024 iPad Pro with the M3 chip that Mark Kerman is talking about with OLED screens and all. So let's see if that's the one that makes me upgrade or not. But until then, this old boy is getting me through. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Do not forget to drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Texas Talking to you here. Bye bye.